across. Thank you. So, um, this is a squash, and when my dad did his TEDx Houston presentation, he brought a giant oversized squash on stage. So I assumed I had to as well. So that's now a family tradition that when you do a TED talk, you have to have some kind of oversized squash. Uh, this is actually a very special squash. Um, Dr. Bob Randall, who's the godfather of gardening and local food in Houston, developed this squash, and this is his heirloom variety designed to grow in Houston. So, so that's my squash. Uh, mostly what I'm going to talk about today is playing with maps and trying to tell you some stories about Houston that might not be the stories you've already heard, and then I'm also going to show you how to lie with maps. Um, so here we are, and just to get you oriented, um, Houston is a city that's the same distance from New York City, LA, and Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Uh, and if we zoom in a little more, we're also the same distance all the way across Texas to El Paso is the same distance from Houston as Atlanta is, and Mexico City. So other than Dallas, the, the major cities close to Houston are Atlanta and Mexico City. And so I think over the next 50 years, I think our connection to Mexico City is going to be perhaps more important than our connection to, say, Chicago. Um, so that's something to think about Houston. Um, so zooming in a little more, and here I'm going to take off the country lines. Uh, because I believe in free trade and free people, uh, so we don't need the borders anymore. Um, and then, since we are in America, here's some roads to help you get oriented. Uh, and so this is 250 miles around Houston, and this is in the traditional like urban economics, this is the hinterlands of Houston. So these are our tributaries, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, San Antonio, uh, Baton Rouge, a little over to Baton Rouge, um, and but we should think about, this is essentially our mega region. This is, our, our lives are going to be economically and socially more connected to Dallas and to all these places uh, than everywhere else in the world. Um, and our, 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 our trade and everything is more with these. So we need to think about connecting to, the, to our hinterlands. Um, and moving a little closer, this is a hundred mile circle around downtown Houston. And so if you are a foodie and you want to eat local food, this is your circle. Uh, and luckily, this is a very abundant circle. Uh, with the Galveston Bay is, is perhaps the healthiest um, bay estuary in, in North America left. Um, and we also can grow a lot of food around here. Um, that's where I live, on a farm, out in Austin County on the corner of the Houston region. And so, now we're going to play with maps. And so, there's too many roads in Houston. So I'm going to take those out and just put in a little bit so you can you know where you are. These are the major roads. Um, and so this map that you've been looking at in the background is the expected population growth for the Houston region, uh, for the eight county Houston region. And so we're expecting to add almost four million people between now and 2040. Um, but look where there, there's going to be people added all over, but a lot in our urban area, in our existing, where there are people now is where we will be adding the most people going forward. And if you, this is the magical Houston thing that you always hear about, is jobs. And this is our jobs. We are expecting to add uh, you know, almost one and a half million jobs in the next 30 years, um, all across the Houston region, but focused where our existing jobs are. Um, so our existing job centers of downtown and uh, Greenway and uh, West Chase. Uh, one of the interesting things about the forecast models that there's actually a nerd debate happening in the background is they show West Chase having the predominance of the job growth in Houston. Um, and that's what the models say, and people are wondering if this is real. Uh, it, it's quite reasonable that Houston's job center should grow. Uh, but that's one way to look at Houston. Um, and then this is, this is us. This is the people of Houston right now. Um, and this is, this is where we expect to be in 2040. Um, and so this, really, these are the people that any kind of long-term planning should be planning for this. Um, and so looking back at, at thinking about this growth, uh, when we start talking about lying in maps, I'll show you something. In our region, the story you've heard 
is that everything is happening way away from the city and that we need to invest all of our public infrastructure out there. Um, and even given that scenario, the, these models assume current trends and policies keep going. So even given that we are subsidizing sprawl and, and building too many roads, and by the way, Houston, uh, the Houston region is spending more per capita on automobiles than any other of the top 10 metro regions in the country. So the arguments for that are that, that, that everything's out there, but it's actually not true if you look at the maps right. And Houston's growth is actually where people already are. The, the places that will grow the fastest will be, uh, it appears that population-wise, the, the Galleria area is where you're going to have the most growth. So a reasonable transportation policy would be spending money on transportation for there. Um, and so that's our current jobs, and this is where we're going with our jobs, uh, and this is our job growth. And so a similar story. And it, a really interesting thing about uh, Houston's jobs are actually less sprawled than our homes. <laughs> and you hear the opposite story as an argument for why we have to build the freeways. It's because the jobs are spreading out, so you need people to go out. But the, the true story is the reverse, that the jobs are, are way more compressed than our housing um, already is. Uh, so here's where I show you how to lie with maps. So this map and this map are the same exact data. In this map, in each of the little analysis zones, these are census tracts, um, I did the math and did it per square foot. And so each one is showing you uh, a meaningful measure. You know, so there are more people who are going to go to that square foot than other square feet. Whereas this map is lying to you. And, and this map is just saying, how many people are we expecting to add in that one census tract? The problem is that the way the census does their census tracts is that when you're in an unpopulated area, they make a much bigger tract. And so all this map is telling you, the dark areas are where there are big census tracts. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, most, a lot of the maps you will see in planning discussions, and trans especially in transportation, arguments um, will be this map and it's essentially there is no real information on this map and it actually indicates the opposite of the real map whereas this map is showing you where we are going to be adding the most jobs uh, and if you wanted to support job growth in Houston you would make infrastructure planning decisions based on this map uh, whereas this map indicates a whole different strategy and it's not true uh, and so I will beg of you, when you go out in the world after this and you see any maps uh, on any kind of policy, I just saw a new document, it was a report on bike ped planning for the Houston region, and all of its maps were like this. So they were meaningless maps. So try to watch for that. Um, and then we took it one step farther and pushed the Houston Galveston Area Council to think about squares and to think of the Houston region as just one mile square areas across the whole region. And so this map, just by the nature of the math, you have consistent squares, shows you real data. And it's actually it would be kind of hard to manipulate this map <laughs> to lie with it. Um, and so we keep pushing for these, the, have meaningful maps like this um, that actually show you what's really going on. And so this is looking at that, the, where we think our region will be in 2040. Uh, and this is a realistic picture, although this model assumes all the sprawl spending that we plan to do. Uh, and then this map is the jobs in the future, and then you combine them together, and this is actually the best map. So this is population and jobs. So if you actually want to give Houstonians the most access to things and jobs and education and everything, you make your plans according to this map. Um, so. These are the cities of the Houston region, and the big one in orange is the city of Houston, and it's the land of the free, the laissez-faire, no zoning. But <laughs> it is actually not true, and Houston has zoning. There are two distinct zones, and everything in brown is Houston's SOB free zone, which is sexually oriented businesses are not allowed within 1,500 feet of a school or a church. 
And so just so you know, there are two there. Houston does zone according to land use, and the only use that matters is sexually oriented businesses. And that this is actually a majority, slight majority of the land of the city of Houston is in the SOB free zone. Um, and so another way I was looking at all this stuff is looking at um, the HCAD, the, the, the appraisal district data of Houston. Uh, and it turns out that Harris County is worth $280 billion. Um, And then this property is the most valuable piece of land in the Houston region at uh, something $8,000 per square foot of land. Um, and it turns out it's one little building at uh, 7, 717 Texas Street. And this is where the headquarters of TransCanada are. So the, the Keystone Pipeline is the most expensive piece of land in the Houston region. Uh, and then... I took the, the, most, the 18 most valuable pieces of land in the Houston region, and so 17 of these are in downtown, and one of them is a refinery. Um, these 18 properties are worth $2.8 billion. So those 18 properties are 1% of our region. And so this is, if you're if talking about land parcels, they are the 1%. Uh, and theoretically, the, those 18 properties pay 1% of Houston's budget. <laughs> And most of them are in downtown. Uh, downtown is worth $7 billion. Uh, so uh, what's the point of downtown? It's worth seven, it's $7 million. Uh, whereas this was kind of fun. Uh, this is an Exxon facility. This is the single most valuable thing in the Houston region. And it's worth itself is $1.3 billion for this refinery. So. Thinking about Houston, that this is a lot of the story of Houston, is we have tremendous wealth. A lot of it, the wealth, is in oil refineries. Um, but then we have a massive diversity of, of uses and urban spaces. Houston's traditional urban core is, is actually a very beautiful uh, mixed place where all these different colors represent different uses. Um, and if we zoom in to you know, downtown, midtown, third ward, this is beautiful urban form. And so when you have square grids and small blocks, um, more people are going to walk. Uh, you can facilitate transit better. You can actually, car trips are going to be shorter. Um, and more people will be encouraged to walk, to bike as well. Um, and it's just interesting, the whole no zoning, that, you know, this is Montrose and that this is, a weird mix of all kinds of things. And that actually means that you're going to live a more efficient life if you live here than in some place that's, that's a monoculture. Um, you actually have greater access to things and everywhere you want to go. Uh, whereas here we are actually in zoned West U. So we're right here in the middle in the mixed use area, which is a wonderful mixed use area where we are. And then these massive zoned residential only. Uh, so that means that a resident living way over in the corner of that, that area probably won't walk over here to get coffee. Um, whereas if you were in Montrose where there was stuff all along, you would. Um, so a final way I wanted to leave you thinking about the Houston region is this is our good urban center. Um, and this is our light rail plan. Uh, this is the five-line system that Houston's planning with a, a half-mile buffer around it. Generally, most people will deal with walking half a mile to get to high-quality transit. And so, as we develop our light rail system, which is the uh, most eff effective new modern light rail system in the nation uh, in terms of ridership per mile, because we put it in the right place, in this place where there are lots of people, um, and if we keep building our system soon, we'll have more people riding our light rail system than Dallas's whole rail system, which they've been doing for much longer and which cost them a lot more money because they didn't put their system in the right place. Um, and so this Houston is going to be, over the next 20 years, um, a huge part of our reality. How many people can live here and live a low carbon lifestyle uh, and, and live a more affordable lifestyle in terms of transportation? And can we build safe, complete streets so people will want to live there and walk around? Uh, and can we finish this, this darn light rail system? So 
Uh, I hope I've given you some clues on how to watch out or how to line on maps if that's what you want to do. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much.